What's going on guys? Welcome to another video. And if you're watching this video, then congratulations on your brand new Google Pixel 8. Now I got mine right here in front of me. I just turned it on. I haven't changed any of the settings just yet. So in this video, I'm going to take you through all of the things that you need to do first on your brand new Google Pixel 8 device. Now we have a lot to cover, so let's get right into it with the very first thing you need to do, and that is to customize your lock screen. Now the Pixel 8 and 8 Pro ships with Android 14 installed, and one of the new features on here is the ability to customize your lock screen. So to do that, what you want to do is just long press on your lock screen, and you'll see this button here that says customize lock screen. We're going to tap on that, we're going to unlock our phone, and now you can see we have a few options in here. So what we can do is swipe through here and we can select a new clock face. So you can just go through here and select whatever you like the most. And then we can go down to this section and we can also change the colors of the clock. So you can see we can go through here and then we can click on these three dots to get a few other color options or we can even change the theme. So if we want a dark theme or a light theme, we can customize that from here. Now, if we go back to our lock screen settings, we'll also have some options of wallpaper. So you can see all you gotta do to change your wallpaper is just select from all of these that Google provides for you. And if you want more wallpapers, you can just hit more right here. And you can see we have a whole bunch of options right here. So maybe we want something in the for fun section. You can tap into here and you can see just all of the options that Google provides for us. This is so great. You can keep the look of your phone always fresh. So when you find a wallpaper you like, just hit set wallpaper. You can select home screen lock screen or home and lock screen. So let's do both. And easy as that, we now have a whole new look for our phone. Then if we scroll down here, we also have shortcut buttons on our lock screen. So we get two shortcuts. We get one on the left side and one on the right side. So you can see by default, the left one is set to home. So this is your Google Home and all of your smart devices. And then we also have a right shortcut that's set to your wallet. Now, if you want to change these, you have a few different options. So maybe you want to add your flashlight on there. And then maybe we want the left shortcut to instead of go using our Google Home, maybe we want it to start our camera. So we can select it right there. And now we've updated both of these buttons on our lock screen. Now, all the way down at the bottom, we also have more lock screen options. So let's go into here and we have a few more options that I want to take you through. So the first thing we're going to do is add text on lock screen. And what this is going to do is add some text on your lock screen so you can put your email or some contact information in case your phone ever gets lost. You can leave your contact information here so that if somebody finds your phone, hopefully they're nice enough to reach out to you and return the phone to you. So all you got to do is just fill out some information in here and then just hit save and you're good to go. Next, we're gonna go down to right here where it says now playing. So what this will do is have the microphones on your phone always listening for music. So if you're ever walking through a mall or maybe driving in your car and you hear a song that comes on, instead of having to try to Shazam it or Google for the lyrics and be all distracted while you're driving, your phone will just recognize the songs and then display the name of the song on your lock screen. So you can just take a quick look at your lock screen and see what's playing. And even if you're not able to look at your phone in the moment, one really awesome feature in here is if you enable it, you can see down here it says now playing history. So you can just come in here and your phone will have a history of all of the songs that are recognized and you can always come back here, look at the name of the song and then add it to your playlist later. Really, really useful feature. But next what we're going to do is go back into our lock screen settings and up here we're going to tap on home screen and the last thing we're going to do right here is we're going to scroll down to app grid and we're going to change the grid of our phone and we're going to tap on that. And what I typically do is set this to five by five because that's going to give us the most space to work with so we can add more icons and more widgets on our home screen. So you can see when we go to our home screen, there's a lot more space to work with here. All right, guys, the next thing we're gonna do is give our phone a name. We're gonna make it ours. And this is something I don't see a lot of people doing, but if you go into your phone settings and then scroll down to about phone, you can see up here, there's a device name. And by default, it's just called Pixel 8 Pro or Pixel 8, depending on what you have. But what you should do is remove this and give your phone a name. So I'm gonna call it Alex's Pixel because this is my phone. And anytime you're connecting your phone in your car or searching for it with a Bluetooth device, it's going to show up as Alex's Pixel. And I know that this is my Pixel device. Now, while we're here in About Phone, the next thing we want to do is make our phone faster by speeding up the animations. And to show you exactly what I'm talking about, we're going to go all the way down to Build Number. And we're going to tap on this a couple of times until you see that it asks you for your PIN. We're going to put in the PIN that we set up when we set up our phone for the first time. And you can see it says you are now a developer. And now when we go back to the main settings page, we can go to system and under system, we'll have a new option here that says developer options, which is what we just enabled. And then here, what we're going to do is hit on this little search icon and we're going to look for animator duration scale. And right there, you can see we have three options. We have window animation scale, transition animation scale, and animator duration scale. They're all set to one X, but what we're going to do is tap into each one of these and we're going to set it to 0.5. 
5x. And what this is going to do is speed up our animations. So anytime we are leaving applications, anytime we are opening up applications, anytime we are switching between applications, and these animations are now twice as fast because we set it from 1x to 0.5x. And even though it doesn't actually make your phone faster, it's the perception. Your phone feels a lot faster because all of these applications and moving around your phone just feels a lot more snappy. Now you can even take this a step further by completely disabling animations by going into your phone settings and then scroll down to accessibility. Go to color and motion and then right here we have an option for remove animations and if we enable this we now no longer have animations at all and you can see everything just pops on and off of our screen there's no animation at all now personally i don't really like this because even though it does make your phone a little bit faster it just doesn't feel as smooth i do like a little bit of animation it makes your phone feel nice and smooth and fluid. So I do like to just increase that animation to 0.5x, but I don't like removing animations at all. But if that's something you want to do, you can go ahead and do it from there. Now, one complaint I know a lot of people have with modern day phones is they're just too big. You can see that these phones, especially if you get the Pro model or the S23 Ultra or the iPhone 15 Pro Max, you're going for the bigger ones. They're just so huge. And you can see when it comes to reachability, my thumb can barely get halfway to the other side of the phone. So it's kind of hard to use your phone one-handed, but there's a setting that you can enable on your Pixel device to make one hand use a little bit easier. And to do it, what you wanna do is go into your phone settings, scroll down until you see system, go to gestures and then enable right there, it says one handed mode. Now this is off by default, but if you enable this, what you can do now is swipe down from the bottom right here and you can see how it brings the top of your phone down to the bottom. And now you can reach the more outer edges of your phone. And this just makes it much easier to use your phone one handed. All right guys, the next thing we're gonna change is the default behavior of this power button by default, all phones these days have this mapped to when you long press it, it brings up your assistant. So on Samsung phones, it'll bring up Bixby. On iPhones, it will bring up Siri. On Google phones, it will bring up the Google Assistant. We used to be able to hold this to bring up that power option menu. And I'm gonna show you how to bring it back. So what you wanna do is go to your phone settings. <clears throat> We're gonna go back into our system. We're gonna go to gestures. And right there at the bottom, it says press and hold power button and it's set to digital assistant. But if we set it to power menu, you can see now when we long press that power button, we get that good old power menu back and we can restart our phone, power it off, go into emergency mode, or lock it down. And don't worry too much about losing access to your Google Assistant because I know the Google Assistant is actually a good assistant and I myself use it quite often. And if you actually want to use it, there's another way that we can bring it up. So after you've made this change, what you wanna do is go back into your phone settings, scroll down to system again, and then we're gonna to go to navigation mode. If you use gesture navigation, tap on this cog wheel right here and then enable swipe to invoke assistant. And you can see it says swipe up from the bottom corner to invoke the digital assistant. And now what you can do is swipe up from the corner and you can see we've enabled that Google assistant and you can start interacting with it, making appointments, setting timers and reminders or alarms and using it however you want. You can see you can do it from either side. And of course, if you use button navigations, you can go back into here, tap on the cog wheel for the three button navigation. And you see right there, it says hold home for assistance. So you can enable this. And when you hold the home button, you can bring up your Google Assistant. All right, guys, next let's enable the back tap feature on our phone. What this is going to do is allow us to tap the back of our phone to perform an action. This is disabled by default. So if you wanna enable it, you gotta go to your phone settings, go down to system tap on gestures and right there at the top it says quick tap to start action and you can see right there by the picture when you double tap on your phone when we enable this you can select what action you want your phone to take so by default it says to take a screenshot so if we exit here and you can see now when i tap the back of my phone it will take a screenshot and you can of course go back into your phone settings and then choose what you want that double tap action to take. So you can bring up your digital assistant, play or pause media, see your recent apps, show notifications, toggle your flashlight, or you can even open up a specific app. So if you tap on this cogwheel, you'll see all of the applications you have installed on your phone. And this is a really nice way if you wanna maybe open up some banking application or maybe Google Maps so you can quickly get directions, you can map all of this to your back tab. Definitely a really useful feature. But the next thing we're gonna do is something I think all phones need to start doing by default. I don't know why all of them just don't have this enabled, but that's to show the actual percentage of your battery. We just have these, this icon and we don't actually know the exact percentage of our battery. All phones, all manufacturers for some reason have this off and you need to go ahead and enable it. So what we're gonna do is go into our settings and we're gonna look for battery tap into there and then we're going to enable battery percentage and now you can see right there it shows that we have 34 percent battery now this next setting is specific to the pixel 8 pro and what we're going to do is increase the resolution of this display to make it even better because by default 
it's set to the lower resolution. So what we're gonna do is go into our phone settings, go to display, I'm gonna scroll down to where it says screen resolution. You can see by default, it's set to high resolution, but we're gonna set it to full resolution. And now we're gonna get an even better screen experience with that higher resolution. There's more pixels on the screen and everything's gonna be a little bit more sharper. And yes, this will use more battery, but the display on the Pixel 8 Pro is an LTPO display and it is a really efficient display. So you don't need to worry about the battery being affected too much by this your phone is going to be just fine and now the last setting under display you can see it says screen protector mode and what this will do is increase the touch sensitivity and improve touch when using a screen protector so again if you use a screen protector and you find that sometimes your phone isn't registering your taps you can go ahead and enable this and it will raise the sensitivity of your phone to better register your taps now the cameras on the Pixel phones are absolutely amazing. They are very capable cameras of taking great photos and videos, but if you are using these cameras with their default settings, then you are missing out on some of their capabilities. So what you wanna do is go to your camera by tapping on the camera icon right there, or you can just double tap the power button to bring up your camera. And what we're gonna do now is go on the video tab and then we're gonna hit the settings icon right there. And you can see that by default, the resolution of these cameras is set to 1080p. But if you wanna take higher resolution 4K photos, you can tap onto here and you can see now we're taking 4K ultra high resolution video. You can also go down here and change the frame rate if you like to shoot in 24, 30 or 60 FPS. 60 FPS is going to give you that nice slow motion. So if you ever want to edit your videos and slow them down a little bit, you definitely wanna make sure that you're shooting in 60K. But keep in mind that that's going to take up more storage on your phone so when you're just using these cameras normally make sure you set these to 24 or 30. all right guys now the last setting that we're going to look at is probably one of the most amazing and important features that google has and it's called at a glance and it's what you see right here under your date you have your temperature right here but there's a lot more that goes into that other than just temperature and i'm going to show you exactly what i mean because all you got to do is long press your home screen go to home settings and then you'll see at a glance right there if you tap on this cog wheel and then scroll down here you can see everything that at a glance entails and you can see we can get things like earthquake alerts so if you live in a place where earthquakes are common you're going to definitely want this enabled this could potentially save your life if you have a package delivery on the way it can show you notifications for that if you have an uber coming maybe you have a stopwatch or a timer running if you have a ring at the doorbell maybe you even left your flashlight on for example let's say i have my flashlight on but my phone is laying face down like that and i don't notice that my flashlight in is on instead of just having it be on and burn my battery you can see at a glance will tell me that my flashlight is on and i just got to tap on it to turn it off such a convenient little feature and then if you scroll down all the way to the bottom you can see we have even more features right here and you can get some really cool notifications like how long the estimated commute to your work might take or even get an estimated time to leave so let's say maybe you have an event to get to it can tell you a recommended departure time for your upcoming event so it will look at what traffic is like and tell you what time you should leave so you can get to your location on time or maybe if you have some really bad weather on the way maybe there's a storm coming or a blizzard and you don't want to get caught in it you can see everything right here in your at a glance section and it is just so convenient to just be able to look at your phone and see if there's bad weather on the way or maybe how long it's going to take you to get to work or maybe what time you need to leave so you can get to your friend's birthday party on time such an amazing feature i highly suggest you guys go through it and learn about all of these features and everything at a glance can do for you but there you go guys that's going to do it for this video about everything that you need to do on your brand new google pixel 8 and 8 pro device i hope you enjoyed this video i hope you learned something from it if you know any other useful settings that you think other people might want to know about definitely leave them down in the comments but that's going to do it for this video hope you guys enjoyed if you did be sure to leave a like subscribe and i'll catch you in the next one peace